Hello everyone and welcome to the final video in the genetic algorithm video series that I've created inside of Unity. We ended the last video with a serious problem. As you can see here, our background is continuously changing colors, but the spheres converged all on one particular color. And even though they're breeding and making children, they, didn't, they no longer have enough genetic diversity to actually change anything about themselves. They are stuck in a rut and can't get out of it. And that is where mutation is going to come in handy and allow us to have these mutants with slightly different or actually potentially wildly different values that'll let other children uh, fit better to the current environment and let them all change along with it so that they continue to uh, prosper properly. Because really, if we were evaluating these things and not only just killing half of them, but killing anything that was just completely different, everyone here would be dead. So let's go ahead and jump straight into code by going into our population c -sharp script. So within our breed function that we had created, where we generate two new bunnies based upon two parents, we end up running into a problem. And that is the fact that we're not randomly kind of messing up the genes a little bit, giving them a little bit of variety. That's what we're going to fix here by creating our evaluate mutation method. So right under here, let's just go ahead and create this. It's going to be a public method, not that it has to be, but it will be here. And then it's going to be called evaluate mutation. It's going to take in the color of the bunny rabbit currently, because that's what we're going to be manipulating. And then we're going to return that color when we're finished with it. So we're going to return a new color and we'll fill that color in in just a second. So how are we going to handle this? Well, you don't want everyone to mutate all the time because if everyone's mutating wildly, then no one's really gaining anything from their parents. Everyone's very different and we're not converging to any one particular optimum fitness score. So how much you decide to mutate your population is incredibly important. It can be high, it can be low, but so let's do a float rate of mutation. And this is just going to be a value between, uh, well, zero and one, I guess is what I'll say. And I'm gonna say that there's a 10% chance of a mutation occurring for each of the RGB values. That is, we're not treating the full color as a mutation. Almost each of the RGBs is kind of its own gene. And each one of those has a 10% chance of being modified. Let's now create a new vector. So vector three, and this is gonna be called mutated color. This is the color we get out in case something, well, basically happens. And that's going to be a new vector three. And it's going to be composed of bunny, the color basically, bunny.r, bunny.g, and bunny.blue, b. Now we need to see whether or not we should be even doing this. So first of all, we need a for loop. We're gonna use a for loop to iterate over the x, y, and z values of the vector. So let's do int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, because that's how many terms we have in a vector. And then of course, i plus plus. Now is where we determine whether or not a mutation occurs. And we should put a semicolon in here, shouldn't we? There we go. Oh, if. We're going to grab a random value from the unity engine dot random dot range. And that range is going to be between 0.0 F and 1.0 F. And if that range is less than or equal to our rate of mutation, then guess what? We're going to mutate that particular RGB value or that particular R or G or B value. So let's do mutated color i, which is going to be 0, 1, or 2, is equal to the unity engine dot random dot range, and now 0, 0.0, 1.0 f. So of course a value between 0 and 1. And then finally we get to return our new color, which is going to be based upon this vector right here. So mutated color dot x, mutated color dot y and mut mutated color, mutated color dot z. Great. Now we just need to call this method at the appropriate place. And that is after we have created our bunnies. So down here, we do our create bunny one and we do our create bunny two. And then that's where we're then going to call our mutation upon them. This by the way, is within the end of the breeding method that we had created last time. So right here above set color, we will do 
mutate, evaluate mutation, and we're going to pass in that temp color. If it gets mutated, well, that's what goes out. Temp color is equal to that. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing over here for this particular bunny. And then we just keep copy and pasting. Anytime we're about to set that color, we want to make sure we evaluate our mutation beforehand. Yes, we could program this a little bit differently and maybe make it a little bit more optimized, make this a function because all this code is looking very, very, very similar over and over and over again. But let's just go with it for now. That's up, you know what? That's a homework for you to figure out how to deal with. Okay, and with that now, we should be uh, randomly uh, mutating our guys. And let's take a look at what actually happens. So let's go ahead and stop this program and hit run. And now what we should notice is we're converging on it, but there's always these few guys out there, these few individuals who are just a little bit different, a little bit more odd. And those oddities, those ones are the ones who end up becoming more fit, actually, most of the time towards the background as it changes. And then they begin to have a higher fitness score and then breed more than the rest of them. And that's pretty much it. Um, there are other ways for you to handle things. In fact, this series could go on for an incredible amount of time. Uh, as I've been doing research on this topic, there's just a very big field in genetic algorithms. So I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and feel free to leave a comment on why. And if you want more content like in this in the future, please feel free to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Hopefully it'll be something dealing with FNAF or one of the normal series and my break will be over. So long.